On today's date, October 12, 1985, newspapers from all over central Pennsylvania reported that East Pennsboro Township Police Department had captured Bigfoot. It all started back in August of 85, when residents living in the wooded area off of Pine Hill Road began reporting strange noises and foul odors in the woods. On August 28, 1985, the Patriot News reported on these complaints, but it didn't get much attention until a dark night a month later, when the first sighting was reported. A man driving on Pine Hill Road, just after midnight, reported seeing a tall, hairy creature off the side of the road. The man reported that it didn't have a neck and its arms reached below its knees. A second sighting was reported in the same area and it was described as at least six and a half feet tall. A week later, the Patriot News released an artist's conception based on the description of this creature. As area newspapers began reporting on this story, large groups of people began searching for the creature with spotlights and guns. The police chief, James Corbett, began calling area department stores to see if they were selling costumes that matched the description of the creature. He learned that they were. Police were then tipped off that a Craig Brashear had an ape-like costume. Police then interviewed Brashear at his place of employment and he confessed to being the creature. The October 12, 1985 Patriot News reported that Brashear was cited for disorderly conduct the day prior, but the creature's story did not end there. If we go to this scary book from that time period, the, uh, the Class of 1986 East Pennsboro High School Yearbook. Oh! Well, this is definitely 1985. There's a lot of feathered hair in this book. Brashear began selling shirts to pay off his fine. The original shirts are going for $1,000 on eBay right now. The creature was even invited to the East Pennsboro Halloween Parade. His suit made appearances at the East Penn High School pep rallies that year. So even though there was a confession and the case was solved as far as police are concerned, some don't believe that the sightings matched up to what Craig Brashear stated he was doing. Which includes the first person to report seeing the sighting. He contended all along that he didn't think that what Brashear was admitting to was what he saw that night. It's hard to believe that this was actually 38 years ago, but looking back to old newspapers from the same time period as the Pine Hill incident, September and October of 1985, I realized that there are multiple similar sightings scattered throughout central Pennsylvania. The September 18th, 1985, Lebanon Daily News reported that 22-year-old Edward Creamer reported the sighting of a Sasquatch-like creature in North Anvil Township on September 5th. Creamer stated that he and his girlfriend saw a large, black, long-armed creature in his parents' yard. It had an ape-like head and didn't respond to his shouts. Creamer stated that this wasn't the first time Bigfoot was thought to be in the area. He said his cousin had an encounter with something similar when a creature with big claws and teeth jumped out at him as he walked by an area where chicken entrails had been dumped. Creamer has also stated that he has heard reports of a Bigfoot sighted in the waterworks area about five miles from his home. This same article consulted a self-proclaimed Bigfoot stalker. Wayne King is the director of the National Bigfoot Sasquatch Information Center. King stated that he thinks Creamer's sighting is authentic and another sighting might lure him to Lebanon County to look for the creature. King told the reporter, I know what it's worth, I'm prepared to kill it, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. King stated that he was warned in the past by the Game Commission that if he killed a Bigfoot and it resembled a human, he would be prosecuted for manslaughter or homicide. The paper included King's contact information to report other sightings. So here, 38 years later, I wondered if King was still Bigfoot hunting, so I decided to search for him. I located records that show he still lives at the same address that he listed in 1985, but his telephone number had changed. King is now 87 years old, so he would have been 49 when the newspaper interviewed him. Apparently, King is still on the hunt. I located a 2021 article in a Michigan newspaper indicating that King still receives reported sightings. Digging a little deeper into 1985 newspaper reports, the October 10th, 1985 Lebanon Daily News compares their incident to the Pine Hill incident. The article indicates that on September 29th, Tom Leach of Valley Street, East Pennsboro, reported seeing a Sasquatch waving his arms just beyond the guardrails of Pine Hill Road. And Chief Corbett stated that they investigated two other Bigfoot sightings the same night. The reporter wrote that East Pennsboro is about 22 miles west of North Anvil Township where Creamer allegedly spotted this similar creature. The reporter wondered if it could be the same creature and wrote, Bigfoot would have to cross the Susquehanna River to reach its present sighting area and state police in Harrisburg have not released any reports of Bigfoot crossing the I-81 bridge at the river. The reporter also indicated that Chief Corbett told him that he had an officer check the area of the Leaf sighting on Pine Hill Road just minutes after the encounter but nothing was found. The Bigfoot hunter Wayne King then enters back into the story and it appears that he is not buying the Pine Hill Road sightings. 
The October 11th, 1985 Lebanon Daily News reported that there was another sighting and Wayne King then sent a field representative to Anvil to conduct a routine Sasquatch investigation and authenticated Creamer's sighting. King wrote a letter to the paper indicating four days of work verified five busted trees, an unused cavern, and six indiscernible 15-inch prints. King added two sets of prints were 10 inches but suspiciously wide with an unusual wide toe splay. King also reported that Robert Carnathan and Dan Myers, both of Anvil RD2, sighted a creature between 11 p.m. and midnight in late July while driving home on Bindages Road along Swatera Creek in North Londonary Township. King said he received a letter from Carnathan reporting the encounter near the Lebanon Dolphin County line shortly after Creamer's story appeared in the newspaper. According to King, Carnathan described a creature that walked onto the road and stood upright, forcing Carnathan to stop his car. The creature was allegedly three and a half to four feet tall and weighed about 50 pounds. Carnathan told King that the creature had chestnut colored fur with a flat face. He stated that it stood about seven feet from the front of the car for roughly two minutes, let out a crying howl and walked off. The reporter told King about the East Pennsboro incident and wrote that King was amused. King allegedly stated that he would like to interview the residents who saw the Bigfoot in East Pennsboro. Due to Chief Corbett stating that three gorilla costumes have been purchased from the Area Hills department stores within the last two weeks, King stated that he believed the encounters probably stemmed from a Bigfoot masquerade. King stated that he plans to contact the East Pennsboro Township Police Department to follow through on the alleged sightings and offer assistance. He said it wouldn't be the first time that he helped police clear up a Bigfoot hoax. The reporter then contacted Chief Corbett, who told the reporter that he did not see any relationship between the sightings in Lebanon County and Pine Hill Road. Poor Chief Corbett. I often wonder why he ended up charging Brashear, but now I'm starting to see why. I started to look back for any other information I could find about sightings in Lebanon County and Swatera Creek areas. I found an article in the October 18th, 1910 Lebanon Courier titled, Strange Beast, A Jersey Devil. The reporter wrote, Bind Nagel's church mystery continues to terrify farmers. Reward offered for taking a monster that lives in a cave along the Sotera. Praise on chickens. I then looked up Bind Nagel's church on Google Maps and saw that it was near the Bind Nagel Road from the 1985 sighting. This 1910 article indicated, It is now believed by many people in this vicinity that the strange animal that inhabits a cavern in the woods along the Sotera Creek is carnivorous, and that it has a tooth for chicken. The reason for this belief was a visit that was made last night to a chicken coop owned by a man residing not far from the cave said to be the abode of the creature that is mystifying all the people hereabouts whom it is alarming. The owner of the chickens was aroused by a commotion among his fowls and started to investigate. Looking off across the field some distance away, the man thought he could discern the moving form of some large animal, seemingly gray in the dim light of the night. He was not positive about the color. Others have stated that it will be found to be some fearsome creature and that its presence here bodes no good to anyone. Some say that the unwelcome visitor may be the same one that terrorized various places in New Jersey and Pennsylvania some months ago and received the name the Jersey Devil. Another Lebanon Courier article dated October 21st, 1910 titled Strange Monster Dodges Bullets indicates Bindnagel's church mystery baffles a party of hunters. The article explains, A party composed of 15 men and boys, all of them armed, set out in a quest of the strange animal that is alleged to have its lair in a cavern along the Sotera, near Bindnagel's church. The net result of the expedition is that one member of the party claims that he got a glimpse of the mysterious monster and fired a shot at it and missed. That is, he presumes that he failed to hit the beast as he claims that it shook its head savagely and ran away. Another member of the party verifies this story and says the animal disappeared in Adam Bolt's meadow. This morning, another party comprising 20 men visited the vicinity of the cave. While several were watching the cave, a cry was heard and the watchers turned and saw the creature bathing in the Swatera a short distance south of where they were standing. Several shots were fired, but all were without effect. Members of this party described the creature as an animal weighing between 200 and 300 pounds, light in color, and having a sand head. Mr. Malfair, a reputable citizen, asserts that he has seen the mysterious visitor running about in Mr. Rasp Meadow, between the Swatera and Quidapahula. At one farm in the vicinity, the heads of 23 chickens were found. Others claim they have watched the cave on the Swatera and have seen nothing in the shape of an animal in that vicinity except chipmunks.
Thanks for tuning in. If you want to see video versions of this podcast, check out my YouTube channel, Running Into History. And stay tuned for more stories of our forgotten past.